Okay, this is for Dabernathy96, who's coaching U14 girls, right? You want to know how to improve team morale, motivation, and get everyone, um, you want to get pe people excited for games and for practices despite having some poor results and maybe some, some been on the wanting edge, wanting end of some games. The way to do that is by making practices not only fun, more fun, um, but you want to be, you want to spend major time on major things, right? You don't want to spend, right? So I wouldn't even speak about losses. I wouldn't talk about game strategy or anything that happened in the past of the season. I want you to be the most enthusiastic person at training. So when your coaches have more enthusiasm and energy and are bringing good positive energy to practice, that helps players be motivated, right? You wanna um, encourage excellent play when you see it. So for example, if you see a great finish on goal, if players are connecting passes, even on the ground or in the air, you wanna encourage great behavior, um, right? Which is such a difference from yelling at, at poor behavior. When you encourage great behavior, it encourages players to play better and to make great decisions. The simple format for a training session that's a lot of fun and you're gonna get a, the, the pattern so players are gonna begin to expect it expect how the training session is run which makes them look forward to it because it's a lot of fun right if you have a practice that's a lot of fun that players look forward to they're gonna want to come back for more it's like when you do fun things fun things are fun so you should do more of them assuming that they're they're healthy and uh, challenging the way I like to run a practice session is warm up right 10 to 15 minute warm up warm them up real good then it's possession right you could do three team possession right if you got 18 players split them up into sixes 21 into seven you get the drill or you get the idea um you could do two, two team possession um with gates gates on the field so lay cones down on the field and players got to get the way they score point is to pass through the gates and right these are just two simple ways Three team possession is my was my favorite, um, followed by um, playing through the gates. I love that one too. Um, then you go from possession after 15, 10 to 15 minutes of possession, you go into finishing on goal, right? One line, players going as fast as they can, finishing on the ground, hitting the frame, hard shots. So it's hard passes or soft shots, whatever you want to call it, but it's it's a it's a low and hard driven ball on frame every time, right? Make the make the goalkeeper make a save, and this should be uh, it's like high repetition, right? So the line you're going through the line two to three times, and you don't even need a goalie. You don't even need a goalie. You could put two cones in the back of the each of the left side or the right side if you have no traditional goalie, because it does get a bit um. You know, if you're if you're a goalie and you're constantly, you need a, a mentally tough goalkeeper who's going to deal with basically he shouldn't be, he shouldn't be able to make a save. You don't want the goalkeeper making saves. Well, you want him making saves, but the finishing should be so surgical that the goalkeeper isn't making saves because your players are placing in the, in the right spot. So from there, you transition from Slotsville, right, slotting the ball to volleys. You're standing at the top of the key or a little bit higher than the top of the key, maybe three to five yards out. Players they they pick their ball up, they, give, they hand you the ball, they turn around so you're facing, you're facing the goal and they're facing you. You throw the ball over the top of their head, they spin around, one time volley on goal. So you go through that like two or three times. Players chasing their ball, you wanna make sure you have them shooting on a goal that there's a natural backstop so they spend more time finishing and less time chasing a ball. Um, from there you go to crossing and finishing. Four lines total. Two lines on the outside serving balls alternating. Two lines in the middle crisscrossing runs. Everyone rotates lines. 10 to 15 minutes of that. From there you go to, you split the team up, the whole team into three different teams. The reason why you want three different teams with one team on the outside of a field that's very close together with big goals is because for many reasons. The first reason is you foster a high, you foster an environment of high competition. You make the players on the outside have one touch as bumpers, neutral players, and this keeps them engaged in the game. Instead of just being on the sideline with their, you know, twiddling their thumbs, they have one touch to help, you know, keep play moving. They're involved in the game, 
which makes them involved, right? If they're involved, then they have to be aware. If they're aware, then they're present. And with their presence, that's a gift. So you want to help them influence the game so that the, fa the better they play, the faster they get onto the field. Um, you want the goals to be close because you want a high, you want a rapid transition. You want it to replicate gameplay. So they're going from offense to defense very quickly. If you're not marking up, boom, you're off, right? Someone's scoring a goal. If uh, you win that ball back, you want to teach them to be, to be uh, precise, right? Win a ball back or win a 50-50, pass out, finish a goal, finish on goal, right? Take, take the opportunities to take shots. And when you have this, the goals close, it makes it so it's a rapid, right? Players get very competitive when it has to deal with um, um, everyone wants to play. At least that's how I feel that I always want to be on the field. I always want to play. Right? So you can repeat those things every practice and have great response from your team. And what this is going to do, what's gonna, what you're going to see on the field is um, improved performance because players are going to be, because each, you're going to do the things that are the most important things every practice, possession, finishing on goal, crossing and finishing, and playing to goal. It's like it mimics, it's the most important thing that you do every single game. You keep possession, you get it out wide, you cross and finish on goal, right? That should be your whole team strategy. Find which one's the weaker defender of the team you're playing against, get the ball to your fastest player, even if you have to put your fastest player on the other side, let's say they're on the right side, but they have a weak, they got a weak left back, then you switch, right? Tracy and Stacy switch, and then now you're, now you're feeding your most dominant player the ball so that you can whip the ball in and just punish, punish the other team. Um, so, right, it's warm up, possession, finishing on goal, crossing and finishing, playing the big goals, cool down. You do that every training session, and I promise you, you're going to get great, great results. So reach out with any questions. Thank you for your time. Okay.